Now, we have the framework. Ano siya? Ito ang COSO nga internal control framework. So, it consists of the control environment, the risk assessment, the information, and communication, monitoring, and control activities. So, let's start first with the control environment. So, the control environment is the foundation for the other four control components. Again, wala ito ang upat kung wala ni mo control environment. The control environment sets the tone for the organization and influences the control awareness of its management and employees. Now, the important elements of the control environment include integrity and ethical values of management, the structure of the organization, the role or of the board of directors and the audit committee, um, the management's philosophy and policies, the procedures for delegating responsibility and authority, the performance evaluation measures, the external influences such as the regulatory agencies or kana mga examinations by kota na to, Commission on Audit, diba? SEC, BIR, then the organization's policies and practices for managing human resources. So, the COSO or katong framework requires the auditors to obtain sufficient knowledge to assess the attitude and awareness of the organization's management, board of directors, and owners regarding internal control. So, next is the risk assessment. So, second component na ta. Organizations must perform a risk assessment to identify, analyze, and manage risk related to financial reporting. Now, risk can arise or change from circumstances such as changes in operating environment that, expo that impose new or change competitive pressures on the firm, uh, Another risk or another circumstance is that new personnel who have different or inadequate understanding of internal control, internal control. We also have the new or re-engineered information system that affect transaction processing. The significant and rapid growth of or growth that strains in existing internal controls. We have the implementation of new technology into the production process, and then the introduction of new product lines, organizational restructuring, or kind of mga downsizing, and the um, the entering into foreign markets, so another thing, and then the adoption of um, new accounting principles. So, According to framework, it requires auditors to, again, obtain sufficient knowledge of the organization's risk assessment procedures to understand how management identifies, prioritizes, and management their, manages the risk related to financial reporting. Meaning, if we go back to the figure, diba, you have all those risks. Now, when you say risk assessment, yung tanawon Unsa kada kuha ang katong lungag, di ba? Is it a small hole, a big hole, and then what do you do or what hole should we cover first, di ba? Unsa atong unang unsa ato ang unang risk nga atiman nun, di ba? Which which risk has a high chances of uh, maka kumitag or maka incur tag higher loss, di ba? So ano na or unsa na risk? or unsa na exposure wherein mas dako siya gloss nga ma-incur sa imuhang business so mo na tong una nga it try ug solve so yun ana siya uh, management should know how to assess the risk that they are um, encountering now the third component is the information and communication now the AIS system consists of the records and methods used to initiate 
identify, analyze, classify, and record the organization's transactions and to account for the related assets and liabilities. The quality of information the accounting information system generates impacts management ability to take actions and make decisions in connection with the organization's operations and to prepare reliable financial statement. So again, AIS should produce high-quality information which identifies and records all valid, take note of the term, valid transactions. So, katong nahitabo, yun na mga transactions. Provides um, timely information and appropriate detail to permit proper classification and financial reporting. So, that will create an effective AIS. Next is to accurately measure the financial value of transactions so their effects can be recorded in the financial statements and to accurately record transactions in the time period in which they occurred. So, for instance, katong lapping, di ba? Di man to accurate ang time period. Okay. Tapak-tapak man to siya. So, kana siya. Your AIS should provide for those informations for it to be considered as effective. So, auditors must obtain sufficient knowledge of the information system to understand first the classes of transaction that are material to the financial statements and how those transactions are initiated. So, how are they inputted in the system. So, di ba? Unsan niyo siya pag-recognize. And then, the associated accounting records and accounts used in processing. So, unsan niyo mga gibuhang gamit na accounts in classifying. So, ano siya? Now, you should also have knowledge on the transaction processing steps um, involved from the initiation of the transaction to its inclusion to the financial statement. So, the process itself to the recording, kinsa ang record, di ba? After recording, who will cross-check, di ba? After na checking napabakay napa another step pag yun, na, napay mo check sa, or napay mo review sa nag-review. So, ina na siya ba? Then, next is, you should have, or you should understand the financial reporting process used to Compile financial statements, disclosures, and estimates, or the output itself. So, the red shows relationship to the general AIS model. So, katong input, process, output, and then feedback, if ever na ka. The next um, component is monitoring. Oops. Okay, there. Now, monitoring is management must determine that internal controls are functioning as intended. Thus, monitoring is a process by which the quality of internal control design and operation can be assessed. This may be accomplished by separate procedures or by ongoing activities. So, there na to mo come in ang feedback ni mo sa katayimuhang AIS model. Now, um, a company or an, an organization's internal auditors may monitor the entity's activities in separate procedures. So, they gather evidence of control adequacy by testing controls, mananakay test of controls, and then communicate control strengths and weaknesses to management. So, as part of this process, internal auditors make specific recommendations for improvements to control. Then, we also have ongoing monitoring which may be achieved by integrating special computer modules into the information system that capture key data and or permit tests of controls to be conducted as part of routine operations. Now, um, management reports which highlight trends and exceptions from normal performances. Now, on my previous work, Sa internal control is, for example, sa... Uh, okay. Kata lang sa akong first. Because my past experiences is both internal control in my two previous companies. So, or in not internal control, but internal audit. So, 
what we do is that annually or not really annually but upon request by the management is that we test out the process that is currently applied in the system or kung sa ang ginasunod sa among company like example the process of procuring assets diba or kanang sa purchasing nimo or sa kana imuhang um, expenditure cycle so kana your expenditure cycle we make a process flowchart of our current system and then we include in the flowchart the controls that are applied so what does the manage of uh, what does the system or what is a current system controls that are already in effect and then we discuss within the group or like first is within the internal audit group um what methods or procedures can we do to further strengthen the internal control of our company so for instance if we see a certain task that there is no cross-checking or there is no reviewing of the transaction like for example for example if mupalit ang company o goods the banasi staff purchasing staff Si purchasing staff, siya ang mangita og supplier, siya ra pud ang tingbuhat og PO, ana mag siya ra buhat tanan in relation to the purchasing kay staff ra man. However, walay supervisor na mo cross check sa iyang buhaton kung sakto na ba na. So, it is a risk already because since si sta na ra man ni staff tanan ang power, di ba, in relation to dealing with your suppliers so there are tendency where in si staff is mo nanya siya collusion with the supplier di ba or katong apply niya tong katong mga vendor fraud or vendor nga mga schemes di ba so with that is knowing na risk na siya or it is a red flag on our end so one of our suggestions may be kay ana hire another person na mo check sa pangbuhato ni staff or so na anay um su supervisor baron or purchasing manager ana na maoy mo cross mo maoy mo cross check kung sakto ba na ang magipang quote na mga prices uh, mo tawag sa kanang koan sa supplier na is this really your quoted price dili na ba makangyo and so on and so forth and ana para na ay cross um para na ay check and balance between the work so that is one way of um, allowing the company or improving the operations of the company without compromising, di ba? Ang imuhang um, or without compromising the safety of your asset. So, maskin mo ingon ka nga, mo, puno siya sa imuhang process, like, di ba, na amay, like, instead of ang process is 8 steps ra siya. For instance, if you apply internal controls, is mahimu na siyang 10 steps. However, the impact of applying those 2 additional steps is mas greater pa kay tungod. Again, there are controls. So, maka-safeguard siya sa imuhang assets. So, balik niya pun katong cost-benefit analysis ni mo nga. Even though you are adding those 2 additional steps, but their impact to the company as a whole is mas greater man in com in comparison to katong cost sa pag-add ni mo og those two additional steps so mo na siya nga maka help siya sa pag increase sa efficiency and effectiveness of the of, of the operations of the company so giha na mo kami ng katong monitoring na factor or component sa imuhang internal control and then lastly is your control activities so, these are the policies and procedures used to ensure that appropriate actions are taken to deal with the organization's identified risk. So, control activities can be grouped into two distinct categories. So, we have the IT controls, which are specifically related to the computer environment, and the physical controls, which primarily pertains to the human activities.